Alright guys, how's it going again today? Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to Valorant News. Plenty of drama to dive into today. Shazam and G2 hitting some tier 2 drama that we're definitely going to dive into in the coming minutes. But also Sinatra, his contract it seems with Sentinels is over and he has not been spotted with any lineup trying to qualify for challenges. Does that mean his pro career is over? And what does it mean for his future at Sentinels? Very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that one plenty to discuss firstly another map teaser here for valorant now this seems to be this is either the new map they're in or this is like um, a new version of split so roman's sitting here kind of clipping off this bonsai tree now um if you guys know about this i'm pretty sure that split when it was in development was codenamed bonsai so this is definitely a reference to split now whether this is basically means that split's going to get changed and stuff which is going to happen and we believe on january the 10th i think next week for effectively from today that's when both maps are going to re-arrive split with its changes whatever they're going to be which we might see this weekend and also the new map which is arriving as well so that's kind of what we have for now where this is who knows but um pretty cool they do stuff like this because it does make you rather excited for what they're going to come out with a couple of roster things firstly this from ascend stark so is finally free obviously he had a pretty tough time this organization the last year or so and um, now his contract is done they're bidding farewell to him for his next adventure and this is the question now with Sinatra we'll discuss in a second. It might be a similar-ish story with Sinatra. This as well from Vitality Bone Cold. He makes quite the statement here and says, I feel I'm going to be the next season of the VCT going into it. I'm going to be the strongest eye gel in Europe. So good confidence. Of course, good that the players have this level of confidence. But then again, Vitality aren't expected necessarily to be an absolute dominant force when you compare them to a team like Fnatic with the unbelievable amount of firepower they've put together. Liquid as well. That European region is going to be exciting, but there's so much talent there spread over plenty of teams that there are up sets ripe for the possibility. Quick note as well on Nerd Street, another bit of drama before we discuss the spicy drama of the day. So we know that um, in terms of these tier 2 teams or these tier 2 organisers, we've got Knights, right? And we've got Nerd Street, they usually do a lot of them. Knights are relatively well regarded, they've of course got their own teams and stuff and have done in the past but they run a pretty good set of tournaments in tier 2. They've of course partnered with Riot to run the tier 2 ecosystem there for challenges. Nerd Street are another team that does do stuff but um, apparently a $50,000 land back in August has still not been paid out here. So, I mean, yes, Frosty says the FTX hit might have affected payouts, but um, they're still hosting tournaments to this day, and yet apparently plenty of players haven't even been paid for this one, so definitely a big story as well. We'll keep up on over the coming days if there's any developments on it. Now, this is the drama that I thought was pretty funny last night. This is Metro T-Dog Professional Valorant IGL at Metro Esports, and he calls out G2 LFT Oxy. So, I think it's still hilarious that Oxy has LFT in his name after that's kind of been his, you know, LFT Oxy has been what people know him as. Now he's G2. He's still looking for a team Oxy, right, from G2. Pretty funny stuff. Now, this is, he's got an alt account, right? Most pros have an alt account. BTS Stan or whatever. So he plays on this account in Ranked and um, T-Dog comes out with a 40-minute video here explaining that um, he was throwing in Ranked. So T-Dog says this video is a warning from the Valorant Council of Ranked that further behavior like this will result in punishment and uh, even goes as far to call him an ELO terrorist. So, um, I mean, yeah, he links the video here. It's about 40 minutes long. I'm not going to watch the whole thing. If you guys want to, feel free. I'm sure it's going to be a really enjoyable video. But even a lot of the pros were like, I'm not watching that broski. Like, unlucky son. But um, anyway, it's basically a video that goes to show certain instances of where Oxy was either saying things to just run it down and basically like inting, right, is what they say in League of Legends and stuff, like intentionally throwing the game away. And there's apparently been some moments of him doing that. And well, there's obviously some responses to this. So Oxy responds himself and then obviously his teammates come into the effect as well to defend him and um, it gets pretty spicy. So Oxy says, for those that think I'm throwing, I don't think I would be with rank 35 throwing. And this is the thing that uh, Shazam goes on to say here in a second that his account where he's supposedly throwing on which maybe he is on occasion but he's still winning a vast majority of games and still has a far better ranked record than the guy that initially posted the tweet. Now, um, you know, T-Dog says, why choose to run around aimlessly saying the game is over on round one, not coming or working with your teammates who are actively trying to win? Why laugh at them and troll when they whiff around a bad gunfight, you are a part of the ranked problem. And um, Oxy says, you know, most of what I say is sarcasm. I relayed a bad message. Sorry about that one. And, um, you know, look, at the end of the day, I can understand T-Dog's frustration, but it is ranked, right? I mean, we are playing just the competitive playlist in the game. It's not really, okay, it's not great. Ranked is never ideal, but um, it's not expected to be professional players at the end of the day or not expected to be professional play and the caliber of play, it is just ranked. And we know that it's a bit messy and the players have talked about it at all 
awful lot. So, you know, I can understand T-Dog's frustration, but at the same time, as Dapper says, honestly, like, I'm gonna be honest here, nobody watching a 40-minute VOD point me to any game where Ranked is good in North America. There straight up isn't any. God bless, because I believe your intentions are good, but brother, get some perspective. A Zuma community is not the one that's gonna break those barriers into actually making a good ranked system. And then Shazam goes for the neck here. He comes straight for the throat with the following. Your main versus Oxy's ult. So this is Oxy's ult here, ranked number 35. 92 wins, 45 losses. 1.38 KT, win percentage in the top 0.2%. So, um, you know, just the fact that he's got, you know, 0.2% top, 0.2% win percentage. And this is supposedly his throwing account. Okay, maybe he throws the occasional game. But, um, you know, obviously it's not a particularly often occurrence. And then this is uh, the screenshot that Shazam then delivers on T-Dog's main account. Where he's, you know, bottom 20%, bottom 20 percent all this type of stuff. So I thought it was pretty spicy, to be honest, between the G2 guys coming to the rescue of Oxy and, um, I mean, yeah, tier 2 drama to start off the year. It doesn't get any better than that. And Shazam's like, yeah, what beef? I was just stating straight facts. So let's talk about Sinatra, though, in the other side of tier 2, because G2, we believe, we're almost certain at this point, they have received the automatic invitation that Riot is giving to six teams in North America into the Challengers side. So 12 teams will compete in Challengers in NA. Six of them are getting invited. Those are going to be Phase Guard, the um, of course, the G2 guys we just mentioned, the M80 boys as well, TSM, and then one other I'm forgetting. So those guys therefore aren't competing in the Challengers uh, play-in tournament that's happening just this upcoming Monday. It begins. However, all the players that aren't automatically invited will have to be playing it through that tournament. So Sinatra is now in question because we believe Sinatra was going to return. We thought that he had a team ready with Emil and Prod, and maybe Marth was going to play with him or something. And then even there was some discussion briefly that he was going to join his Shroud's team. But, um, you know, none of these guys have really been noticed and it doesn't really seem like it's going to be happening anymore. He also explains that after the new year has begun, he's now at his contract end with Sentinels. I thought, to be honest, that maybe Sentinels would keep him around. But in fairness, maybe this is a good thing for both parties just because Sinatra has not been brought back into the Sentinels starting team even last season. It's certainly not going to happen now with new management, new coaches and all this type of stuff. So it maybe makes sense. But of course, he was a content creator there, but he was really involved in their actual content creation operation. So now the question is, is he going to join Sentinels again, or is he going to join another team? Chris says Sentinels never left him. I thought my Molly only needs. But no one left yeah, anyone. Man. The contract has ended, bro. That's just how contracts work. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. ours. Yeah, I thought it was like an infinite He's contract glitch. Getting hard long. They're not coming in. There's contracts for everything in life, bro. Be sure. Lease contracts. You can lease a house for two years. Car lease contracts, contract bro, the time limit. Not if you own it. Good thing we were not it, talking I'm about it. I can put a turret for you in a second. Guys yeah. making up some <laughs> in his fantasy land bro. I don't own <laughs> Sentinels. <laughs> And Sinatra has even said several months ago now that he doesn't intend to come back unless the situation is perfect. If he does want to come back to competing, it's going to have to be with a perfect situation, perfect team. And I guess he couldn't really find that here going into the, these qualifiers. The issue is for Sinatra that if he doesn't play in these qualifiers, as he seemingly is not with his roster, then to get back into tier two or even to tier one is going to be quite the challenge, right? He can't qualify through this if he's not playing in it. And this is the only qualifier for the season. So the next stop is therefore to try and get picked up by a team mid-season, which probably is possible if you're Sinatra, but will organizations want to do it? Because as it stands, I'd have thought he could have joined plenty of these teams, and these are the teams that we know the most notable teams that are playing in that qualifier, and only six of these teams over two weekends will be able to qualify for tier two. But I'm sure that Sinatra could have joined some of these teams, especially because a lot of these guys aren't backed by organizations as it stands. That's when the question is raised there for Sinatra is because Sintels might not want to bring him back for a variety of reasons. Maybe, you know, obviously the accusations and all this type of stuff that's happened especially this year and in previous years as well has not helped his case in terms of organizations that um, are of top tier caliber I mean even I think 100 Thieves said that like look they're not going to go near Sinatra just because it's a bad look for the organization and you can understand why even though from a legal perspective nothing came of those allegations against Sinatra but um, still he's dealing with those issues right and now Sentinels have not dropped him but they've not extended his contract so he's either going to join somewhere else as a content creator if any organization will take him which is the next question
question because let's say he is stuck there on the outskirts of tier two. Some, you know, six of these teams qualify. And then at some point this season, G2 or another team want to make a change. Would they want to go near Sinatra? Or especially because all these teams that qualify will then likely get signed by some organization, which then might have their own questions about it. So tricky situation, but it doesn't seem as it stands that Sinatra has been spotted here, even as Bob Bob mentions here, like, you know, Prod Sinatra, Emil, Shanks and Marv's. What are we doing, right? Why are we not on here yet? And yes, they could still sign up over the coming days. They could still, you know, put pen to paper. But um, if they were serious about this, why would they not have done so already, given all the other teams have already signed up for this tournament and are getting ready to go over the coming days? So very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this in the comment section below. Just to finish up with one quick thing here from Will Mind, I thought was quite interesting. So he's done um, a survey here for favorite maps. So these are the results and the feedback that he has received. And it's quite an interesting list, actually. So Ascent is number one, which I think is expected. Ascent and Haven. So Ascent got 966 first votes, then Haven got 546 and 645. So, you know, very few people dislike Ascent significantly. I'm kind of surprised, to be honest, that Bind averaged out being the third most liked map. I thought that it'd be further down, but um, to me, outside of Ascent and Haven, the quality of the maps falls off quite dramatically, to be honest. And, uh, you know, Pearl is right down there towards the bottom. Fracture is not particularly well liked. Icebox and Binds, very similar, but Binds technically, seemingly, is the community's third favorite map, and Breeze is the worst by far, with many more seventh or worst place map voting than anyone else seems to have. But it's also kind of interesting the fact that Bind has more seventh place votes here in terms of map, people's map favorites than a Fracture or Icebox does, but yet it's still third. So it seems like Bind is kind of the Marmite map where, um, you know, a lot of people hate it, but still a lot of people actually rather like it. So very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.